Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. This is going to be a really cool comic haul that I got. Um, so one of my, one of the viewers of my channel, and I actually got a bunch of books from him in the past, and I did an unboxing video way back when <laughs> with all of it. Um, he, he he was actually the guy that got me the this this book right here. Uh, one sec. This one. He was the one that gave me this book in, well, not gave me, but sold me this book in the past. And he had a bunch more stuff that he wanted to get rid of. Well, not get rid of, but that he wanted to kind of move <laughs> so that he could buy more stuff, probably. Um, and he, you know, said, hey, Alan, do you want to come to my house and take a look at all my collection? I was like, sure, that sounds like total fun for me because I, I love looking at collections. Um, so... It was just a really great time. I, I went to his place, I went through his collection, entire collection, and he's like, oh, just pick pick what you like. <laughs> so I'm like picking all these cool books. And, um, you know, and then we kind of worked out a price for, for, for all the books. It was just really fun. And he threw in a bunch for free as well. So it was just a really great experience. I had a great time. Um, really nice guy. Um, I can't discuss price, but... Um, but I can show you what I got, and you'll you'll see it's pretty awesome stuff. Uh, as I said, it was a really fun time. He had an amazing collection. I was just, I was sort of jealous on a few of his books because his books are a little bit higher end than mine. Mine are so low grade. I'm, yeah, but he had some really great stuff, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, so he was saying that he got really into collecting in 2012. So a lot of his stuff was new. Uh, newer stuff, but he also I think maybe because we're watching my channel or <laughs> or watching uh, other channels that talk about Golden Age, he also got into Golden Age books. So he had a bunch of cool Golden Age books that he was parting with as well. Um, the first book though that I, I when I saw this cover, I was just like, wow, this is a really great cover. Uh, this is Unsacred. I think it's uh, like just a virgin variant of issue number one of Unsacred from the first uh, series. Just a really great cover. Just And it's like mint condition. It's, it's, it's flawless. So just really great, uh, great thing. And what he would do, for the most part, he would sell the books for what he paid for them. So he's quite, quite fair about the pricing. Um, or sometimes he would just give me them for free. So I was like, oh, sure, <laughs> I'll take that. Um, <laughs> it was kind of fun. And then this is another one that he, he, this is actually one of the reasons why I went there because he was like, oh, I had a few of these books that you might be interested in. This one I always liked. Uh, it's that kind of typical uh, scene where you got the hunter and he shoots his friend. Um, so this is Crime Suspense Stories uh, number 12. And I, I do love EC Comics. Uh, I haven't, I don't have a huge collection of EC comics, but you know, it's something whenever I can pick up a few issues, I always try to, you know, pick them up. And I do enjoy these ones. So this is Crime Suspense Stories, and it's a really it's a nice Johnny Craig cover. So that's another good thing about it. It's really great. And it's in reasonable condition too. It looks pretty solid. So that was one of the more expensive books that I picked up from him. And then um he knew that I liked Crime Smashers because uh, one of my favorite characters <laughs> appeared in Crime Smashers, Sally the Sleuth. And um, he just had a bunch of them and uh, we kind of worked out a nice little deal for it. So this is uh, Crime Smashers number six. And he actually showed me how much he paid for these. I was, I, I said, you kind of overpaid. <laughs> he actually bought them all from my comic shop. You can see on the back, it, you know, it's the my comic shop thing. But he kind of overpaid, I think. Sorry, but he did kind of overpay for these. I, I usually can get these pretty cheap. But they're they're cool books. I mean, they're totally under under undervalued often. Uh, you can pick uh, Crime Smashers up usually for about anywhere from twenty to fifty dollars. Um, I think I even picked up number one for around fifty bucks. <laughs> so, and that's the key. That's the big key because it's a seduction of the innocent book. And it's, you know, uh, it's also the first appearance of Sally the Sleuth in comics in the Golden Age. So um, just a really great comic. Uh, and her stories kind of went throughout the series of Crime Smashers. So this is Crime Smashers number six. And it has all these kind of good girl art covers. So that's number six. 
number eight, again, sort of the girl in the red dress, <laughs> and, you know, they're shooting at each other. It's really great. And then we got number 12, again, another girl in the red dress. I think the girl in the red dress is Sally the Sleuth, um, because the way she looked in the Golden Age was a little bit different. So this is Crime Smashers number 12. Uh, yeah, just a really great, great cover. I'm not sure who the artist is, but uh, kind of cool. And then we got uh, Crime Smashers number 14. I just really enjoy these covers. And then we got Crime Smashers, oh, uh, Marion Floss, M Marin, Myron Floss, actually, Myron Floss did the cover. This is Crime Smashers number 15, I believe. Or, yeah, 15. So that's kind of cool. These are really, you know, they really like the guns going off <laughs> on the covers. So that's Crime Smashers. That was just a, that was a kind of a popular uh, uh, crime series in the Golden Age. Okay, one of the really great covers that he... And he actually showed me how much he paid. He got a great deal on this. Um, uh, but it's it's just a beautiful L.B. Cole cover. And I was I was, I was was actually surprised that he was going to part with it because it, it's just such a great cover. This is um, Popular Teenagers uh, Love, Secrets of Love, number 11. Secrets of Love. So L.B. Cole did a lot of these uh, romance covers, and um, he's more popular for his horror covers, but some of his romance covers are pretty brilliant, and I really like this one. So this is uh, yeah, a really great L.B. Cole cover. Okay. Now, one of the cooler big books, I think he, he must have gotten a really great price on it because he, he, didn't, it, he didn't charge me much for it, but to me, it's a big book. It's like a... Not a like not a mega grail, but it's a minor grail. <laughs> it's Police Comics number three, and this is just an early uh, Plastic Man, and all the you know it's like the third appearance of Plastic Man because it's like issue number three. <laughs> uh, so it's like it's early issue where uh, you know it's plastic, you know it's like Police Comics number three. It's like early uh, appearance of all the characters. I even believe that there's probably a there might be a blonde phantom, uh, phantom, um, phantom lady, I should say, uh, phantom lady story in this as well. So, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, and I actually think it might be, I'm, I'm not sure if it's the first appearance of Firebrand or not, but it's kind of a cool book. And it's a bondage cover too. Not girl bondage, but <laughs> still bondage. Um, so really cool. So please comics number three. I just, and he's, he, I think he paid like a hundred bucks or something like that. He, he got a really good deal on this book. So he was pretty nice about selling to me for a fair price. So I really like it. So <laughs> that's my earliest police comics. I'm still hunting for police number one, police comics number one, but uh, he didn't have it. And, uh, and I never seem to be able to get it. Now, this is a comic. I always wanted to have this book in my collection. I just never, for some reason, I never seem to be able to find it. Uh, <laughs> it's a book that should be pretty easy to find. But it's Incredible Hulk 340. And this is just an iconic cover. It's just like that, you know, Wolverine and the reflection of uh, uh, Hulk in his, uh, in his, you know, claws. And I think it's interesting because this is at the time when um, it's Todd McFarlane doing the art. And it's, um, it's the Grey Hulk. <laughs> So it's kind of interesting, a uh, really interesting cover. I just never owned this. Uh, this book was like, this book was expensive in the 90s when I when I first saw it. And it has always been kind of a pretty big book. And it's in a high, higher grade. It's like a VF plus. And he sold me it for what he paid for it. So I thought that was pretty nice. <laughs> pretty great. Um, another cover that um, I never really had was this one. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man um, 363. This is just a great floating head cover with both Carnage, Venom, and Spider-Man's head. Which is a really great one. Uh, never had this in my collection, strangely enough. It was one that I wanted, though. I never, just never picked up. <laughs> um, and then we got this one he threw in for free. 
Uh, this is Green Lantern, number one. And this is like the first appearance of Teen Lantern. <laughs> it's like, uh, he actually, it was so funny. He had so many copies of this because I guess he specced hard on this character. And it's just kind of funny that he had a whole bunch. He was like, oh, you can take one. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I've never even, I never even heard of this, this comic, but it's kind of a cool first appearance. Okay. And then we got Stray Dogs number two. He had a bunch of Stray Dogs. Sadly, I, I love Stray Dogs. Um, and uh, the prices for Stray Dogs have really dropped. They have just, it is sad. You can pick up um, a number one, like nine, eight for like 50 bucks now. <laughs> it's like so crazy. Um, I already had like all the Stray Dogs except my issue number two was a second print and it always bothered me. I hate, I personally, I'm one of those snobs when it comes to second prints. I always want to have the first print. I always like that first appearance, that first uh, issue, uh, not the second prints. So I had the second print of this book, but I'd never had the first print. So he happened to have a copy of it and, and he, I think he just charged me cover for it. It was pretty great. Okay. The next one is another cool one. This is Shudder. And this is an homage to uh, Eerie, uh, sorry, Eerie, Creepy Number One from Warren Publishing. Just a really great cover. Um, and it's like, yeah, I just, yeah, I really like it. So, so uh, he had a couple copies of this and he was, he let me have one. Well, I, I think I, I paid cover for it. So that was pretty nice. Uh, and this one he threw in. Actually, he gave me this one for free. Uh, this is Demon Days. I think it's a variant cover. Yeah. Uh, does it say variant? No. It doesn't say... Oh, yeah. Variant edition. I don't know who did the art, but it is definitely very nice. Uh, Peach Momoko did most of the covers for Demon Days. So, um, but this is just a variant. And I really think it's nice. Very sexy variant. Okay. Now... He had a he had a bunch of really great Golden Age books. Uh, one of the ones that he had, and I'm trying to get a run of this uh, collection. I'm working on it. Um, and this is just one of those ones that I really always liked. Um, this is Terrors of the Jungle number seven. This is an LB Cole cover. Now, these Terrors of the Jungle really only are cover buys. Uh, you, people buy them for the covers because they're reprints of earlier books like JoJo comics and um, a lot of the Fox publication books. So this is just a really um, interesting book because it's a pure cover buy for at the time, um, but it, it had great covers. Uh, just Jungle, Terrors of the Jungle and Jungle Terrors. There's like a bunch, <laughs> they were all like jungle something. Um, were just really great covers uh, just from L.B. Cole. And it was really, to me, it was at his best point because it was a lot of these really sexy good girl art, jungle girl covers. So this is Terrors of the Jungle number seven. Just really great cover. I really like that. That is a big, big book for me to get. Now this is a book that I always loved and um, I actually looked for it. I could never find it. Um, and always the price was fairly like, like it's around 20 bucks. It's not like a super expensive book. But I loved it for the controversy around it. And this is marked number nine. And the controversy is that this was a cover swipe. <laughs> so basically the artist uh, that did the cover basically swiped like a model magazine or something like that. And just, you know, kind of graffitied it up to make it look a little different. Um, but it's just such a great cover. I think it's just such a sexy, sexy cover. Okay. And... And this is a book that I thought I had, but I'm not sure if I have, um, but it's definitely one I want to get. Um, this is Submariner number 19. This is the first appearance of Stingray. And just a, a character that maybe there's some spec around, you know, for the sub, any, anything related to Submariner. He's like one of the villains for Submariner. So Stingray's first appearance, Submariner number 19. And this is another book that really heated up for a while. I, I, I'm not sure if it's still as hot as it was, but this was a really hot book and it's in, it's a really good grade actually. It's maybe a, like a seven or eight. 
um, just really nice. <laughs> it presents extremely well. Um, I don't know. It looks really, I, I, I don't see any real flaws with it. So it might be like, I would say a seven or eight. I don't know, with the press, maybe higher. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but it's just such a clean copy of Thor um, number 166. This is the first time you get him versus Thor. And there was a lot of spec around this book just because it is the first time that they battle. And a lot of these battle covers uh, have become hot recently. So this is kind of a cool one. And then we got a nice Adam Hughes cover. Uh, you know, I, I've seen this cover before. I just never picked it up. Um, this is just Cat Woman number... Is it number 52? Yeah, 52. It's just a great Adam Hughes cover. <laughs> and he sold it to me for a cover price, which is so wonderful. Just a really great Adam Hughes. I really like Adam Hughes stuff. And then we got another one that I never had this in my collection. And I even commented recently because somebody mentioned, like I do my cover challenges every Friday and somebody suggested, hey, why don't you do kiss covers? Like where people are kissing. And I, I immediately thought of this book. This book is the one that I always associate with that iconic kiss. Um, but I never had this book in my collection. So I was kind of holding off on doing that challenge video because I didn't have the book. So, but now I have it. <laughs> so this is uh, Spider-Man number one. And it's the, it's the variant with the kiss, the famous kiss. And he sold me this uh, for fair market value, actually. It was, it's a great book. I mean, it's just a really great cover. I just like the fact that it's upside down. <laughs> and it's like uh, they're reenacting that scene from a Spider-Man movie where he quit, it kisses... Is it Gwen Stacy or MJ? I think it's MJ. Um, so yeah, it's just a famous scene. Okay, so um, then we get into other cool Thor book that he had. Um, this is uh, Thor 168. This is the origin of Galactus. And you can he, he, paid, he paid 20 bucks for it. <laughs> I'm not sure how much it's worth now, but, uh, and it's in a 3.5. So you can see all that on the cover, but it's just a great Galactus cover and it's also his origin. So I, I always like getting, to me, when you collect comics, you should always try to get that first appearance, the second appearance, first uh, uh, title with the character and their origin story. So if you can get all of those or, and first cover would be the other thing, but um, this is a great cover and it's his origin. So really wonderful. So, and speaking of covers, that I, I don't know if this has anything around it, but it's just a great cover. Um, is Submariner number 48. It's just a great uh, Doom, Doctor Doom cover. So uh, Doctor Doom books, pretty much anything with him on the cover has become super hot lately. Uh, and I just thought this was a really great cover. I, I like seeing, you know, Doctor Doom in his full metal, full metal armor going on here. <laughs> it's pretty great. So, yeah. Okay, and so those are the, and there's a couple magazines. Those are all the raw comics that I got. And then I got a couple, he threw these in actually. He gave me both of these for free. So this is a great decapitation cover, Conan the Barbarian, number 164. Just a really great cover actually. Nice decapitation. And then there's another one. Conan the Barbarian, or Savage Sword of Conan, number 60. It's another great cover. really like these Conan covers. It really almost makes me want to start collecting Conan, <laughs> which is dangerous. I'm going to, because there's just so many Conan books. Um, but I don't know. I, I will debate about that. They're really great covers, though. I really, I'm really, really loving the, the kind of barbarian cover cup uh, thing. So, okay. So then he sold me a bunch of slabs. How many slabs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight slabs. <laughs> so this was a pretty big haul that I got from him. Um, so it was quite, quite nice. Uh, the first one is a book, I guess he was specking on it and uh, he actually got it signed. Um, it's just a really nice one. It's high grade. And he sold me this very fair price. Um, 
So this is white pages too, <laughs> which is probably doesn't even have to be said for these modern books, but it's just a really great cover. This is uh, Seven to Eternity, number one. And uh, it's just a, you know, it's cool when you can get uh, it um, signed by the, by the artist. You know, it's kind of cool. And in that gold label, I like that. The next one is purely a cover buy for me. I just really like this cover. I always like my sexy women. So this is a, a nice uh, hot girl cover. This is uh, Justice League of America 72. And it's in a fairly high grade, 8.5. Eight and it's just a really nice, just a, I really like the, the way she is presented on the cover. Just a really great cover. I'm not sure who did the cover. Uh, Joe uh, Colbert. Joe Colbert, uh, Colbert <laughs> cover. Just really great. So that's that one. And yeah, whoops. He had, a, as I said, he was kind of specking on a lot of books. And he had so many of these. This is Philadelphia, <laughs> number one. And he added it, like, he had a bunch in 98. I was like, wow, that's impressive. Um, I actually had this book already, but I never had it slabbed. So I, I kind of wanted to get it slabbed. And he sold it to me for basically the costs of shipping and, you know, what it would be to, you know, send and get it slabbed and stuff. So really great deal. <laughs> uh, I just really like this one. This is Philadelphia, number one. It's really, you know, kind of a cool cover. I think he even had the variant cover as well as a 9.8. He had a pretty awesome collection. Okay. And then we got Batman 90, uh, 96. This is the first appearance of Clown. Uh, it doesn't even say. <laughs> but uh, Clown Hunter is the character. I don't know why it doesn't say it on the cover. It should really say CGC. Put put the fact that it's the first appearance of Clown Hunter. Um, this is the variant. Uh, the variant is like the normal version of this book doesn't show Clown Hunter on the cover. So uh, this book was really hot for a while. It has dropped back down. I think it's like a forty dollar book now. Um, but uh, it was hot for a while. A clown Hunter has been used. I don't know why it, it fell back so much. Um, because this is a rare, rare variant. It does have him first cover appearance and first appearance. So kind of cool. So I was somewhat surprised by that one. Oh, it does say Clown Hunter in the... <laughs> I just didn't see. Um, and then we got uh, just some more jungle stuff. I like my jungle girls. So this is... Uh, uh, Jumbo Comics number 115. These later jum Jumbo Comics aren't really expensive, um, but they are cool. <laughs> I like them anyways. So yeah. And then we got four more, uh, three more slabs. We got some Wings Comics. This one is incomplete, so um, which is sad. It's centerfold is missing. That happens so much with these Golden Age books. They didn't use the proper staples, especially in this time period. This is from 1942, and there was a shortage um, on a lot of materials, and staples were in short supply, so they would often just use one staple in these books, and as a result, the centerfold would pop out a lot. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a shame, but it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a cool book. This is... Um, uh, Jean uh, Fawcett cover and art. So kind of cool. And then we got another Jumbo Comics. This is Jumbo Comics number 90. Just a really great cover. Nice good girl Sheena cover. And Sheena made her first appearance in Jumbo Comics. She made her first appearance in Jumbo Comics number one. And um, this is just a nice Robert Webb cover. So that's that one. And last but not least, one of my favorite artists. Uh, this is Maurice Whitman, and he did a lot of the covers for Jungle Comics. So this is Jungle Comics number 155. Just really great. And he always does the same face. If I zoom in, you can maybe see her face. <laughs> <laughs> always the same face. It's kind of funny. I always make fun of him for that, but I love his covers anyways. 
this really great cover. You got the elephant in the background, you got the good girl running and the little natives attacking from below. It's just a really great cover. So that's, uh, and it's in a reasonable grade too, 5.5. Five. Uh, so yeah, so this is Jungle Comics 155. And that, that was my haul. And he also threw in a box. <laughs> so that was useful. Uh, so now I can put some of my slabs into the box. Uh, so that was my haul. Uh, it was fun, really, it was a really great time. Uh, I want to say again to him personally, thank you um, for inviting me in your home and uh, showing me your collection and giving me some great deals. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, it was just such a fun time. So thanks again for watching everyone and please like, comment and subscribe. And if you haven't already, uh, join like uh enter into my 2000 subscriber giveaway uh i'll put the link in the description to that video so you can you can enter and maybe win a pretty cool comic okay thanks again for watching bye